We're still on Radio 1 today, along with Tony Blackburn. He's my first guest, so welcome. John Peel and Tony Blackburn. <laughs> Huh? They Don't they? Good yeah. All time, yeah. Terrific, Wonderful. yeah. Foot tapping stuff. Oh, Too right. little of that around now. You remember the beginning of Radio One, of course. Oh, you were do. there at the very beginning. You were the first. Yep, absolutely. And Something so I'm very proud of as well. Yeah. No matter what they might say. No, it's very, what, very proud of it's it. It's what indeed. you say that worries them. <laughs> Wait, no, no, very proud of it. What was it like in the early days? I mean, it was the BBC. You, mm. most of you, I was the only one who came from any kind of honest, upright station. The rest <laughs> of you came from a boat. <laughs> Okay, for a boat or a yeah. fort somewhere. That's I right. mean, and this, of course, ran into the, the BBC's idea of how things should be done a mm -hmm. little bit, didn't it? I mean, were they, were they, did they decide to let it all hang out when they brought these jocks from the, the boats to Radio 1A, eh? what? Well, they were very good. They got Kenny, Kenny Everett and myself in to uh, help them design the studios and things like that. And then um, I remember that a lot of the BBC people, it was the flower power era, and they were wearing all the flowery shirts and things like that. And all those of us who come from the ships, we changed into suits <laughs> and things like that. And uh, they all had long hair and we had short hair. And yeah. it, gradually it got sorted out, though. I mean, it was, it was great fun. And yeah. the station, I think, uh, when I launched it in 67, I knew that it was going to sound pretty good. I mean, we had the same jingles as the pirate radio station, so it, it was uh, quite a good sound. I and must, let's, let's pause yeah. a mo and have a look at the very beginning, which was filmed for all posterity. Mm. I want you to have a look at this and weep. Just for fun. Music. Too much. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to the exciting new sound of Radio 1. <laughs> I mean, I, I know it was a publicity man or yeah. a, uh, who did it, but to put Robin Scott standing there like some... A cardboard cutout, like, actually, yeah, I think, of Robin like Scott. Like some spectre at the feet. Like Sooty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> standing there, looking, looking tremendously like, a, like yeah. a BBC man. I remember when I... He was terrific, though, wasn't when he? When I started in the afternoon, I actually had a producer sitting with me for a long time, for about two or three years, who used to say, ten minutes for the next link. All right, you know, quick, wind up when I'd yeah. be talking too much. And you, you never had to tolerate I that. I did, actually, yeah. In fact, the first producer I had is now the controller, uh, Johnny Burley. He mm. was the first person in there. But uh, I had that as well, yeah. But Robin Scott, he was known as the White Tornado. And uh, he was terrific in the early days. And mm. uh, it was, uh, that morning was a very special morning. That was really great, because we had all the photographers there. And uh, the whole thing went very well. I mean, I was glad... I was glad it was over because I thought, well, they were going to record that. And if I'd come on and said the, you know, welcome to the exciting new sound of Radio Caroline or something, you know, it would have been dreadful. Yeah. Uh, You've taken a porky view of it since, but I'll, well, talk, no, to you. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Okay, well, I wanted to right, talk to yeah. John about, really, you were the most unconventional because you were doing something Harvard. rather, rather far-fetched. The, the thing the was perfumed that... Garden. You were, you yes, were into... To frocks and everything. That's right. So, yes, psychedelic music. There's <laughs> oh, no question yeah. about it. Yeah. But I knew I was all right when they got. Uh, I was taken in to meet uh, somebody who'd been put in charge of radios one and two. And uh, I went in there, and he's, I was the last of the DJs to be taken in there and introduced to him. And he was obviously very nervous because he thought I was going to do something unforgivable, like rub drugs into the roots of his hair or something. You know, <laughs> he's obviously fearful of something. And uh, so we were talking. And I mentioned in the course of the discussion public schools, right? Yeah. And he sort of said, oh, so. So you, what, you, you, you knew somebody at public school? And I said, no, I was at a public school myself, actually. And he said, well, so, somewhere on the, so, so on the south coast, you know, somebody who never... And I said, actually, uh, I was at Shrewsbury, Riggs Hall. How's old Brookie? He said. And I thought, straight away, I was in. From that moment on, <laughs> he said, he may not look like one of us, but he is. Yeah. And as soon as they found out I'd been to a good school, it's yeah. all right. You were in public school as well, you see. I there was, was a, yeah. There were a lot of, of, yeah, you were pretending to be young working class unconventional but you were working class yeah, yeah. Right. he used to add on out on the ships he used to have he used to have all those joysticks as well going yes, on yes. program. Yes. It and that's not all listeners i'm afraid his right. program not only sounded good but it smelt the best of the lot yes. as well but they said to me when i came over from ireland an innocent yeah. peasant just setting foot on this great land for the first time they said watch out for john peel he smells like the wrath of god <laughs> <laughs> what can i say that? do they I ever say? you've been the longest serving i mean they, look at that picture you're the only one who's still on radio one yes and you've I mean, if, if one was taking bets, one would have said that you were possibly one of the first to go. This is if... true. If you'd had to pick somebody off that picture and say, which of these brutes isn't going to last five minutes, you'd have said, I'll have that one on the end. <laughs> no question. Yeah. Um, but I think the thing is that... Uh... 
uh, obviously the music that I play kind of updates itself anyway and uh... how do you stay interested in it I can I can only say that well when, when I moved for instance to radio to I, I kind of immediately lost interest in pop music because the other middle of the road was what I was involved in you've obviously been lucky enough to stay but how do you continue an enthusiasm for something that is really played by people who are much much younger than you well the thing is that if you if you if you appreciate like the theater or cinema or poetry or painting or something like that you're not supposed to drop off at any particular age so like our generation is the first one that had its life transformed by hearing rock and roll in, in teenage years and I always relate everything to football because I find it provides handy analogies for most things and I'm more concerned about what Liverpool do this season than what they did last season which was a bad season actually but I mean the, you know the season before that the double and everything but I'm more interested about what they do this season <laughs> <laughs> See? And it's the same with the music. I'm more interested. There is a, and I know that when I leave here, and I'm missing the archers for this, by the way. Uh, but when I leave here, um, and I get to the uh, to, to broadcasting house, there's going to be a big stack of records there, and I'm going to go through those records and change tonight's program and put them in, you know, mm. because I want to hear the new records. And yeah. I hope I always stay like that. Well, you've you of... stayed enthusiastic, haven't you? Oh as yes, well? yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I just love broadcasting. I love radio, and uh, it's showing off, really, isn't it? Particularly, well, I love I, I love soul music now, of course. Yeah, I mean, I always have had this love of soul music. No, you didn't. So. You like just like pop music, and then you moved to Radio London, and you decided no, I'll, no, I'll no. concentrate on the soul music. Oh, you liar! <laughs> you liar! Okay, I, to, to I did the first soul program on yeah. Radio London. Do you remember? To, Tom, to, to, Tom, give, Tom, to give him his yeah. due, I used to, see, I used to think that Tony mm. here was uh, was the Antichrist. I mean, I really did, you know, because he <laughs> he, he, he represented everything that I found disagreeable about broadcasting when we first started, and Kenny. <laughs> Everett and I used to get together to try and plot his downfall, yeah. whereas now I like to think that uh, Tony and I would probably work to cause Kenny Everett's downfall if we got the chance. <laughs> <laughs> That's how things have changed. Yeah, we get on very well together, and uh, I mean, I've got a great deal of respect for uh, John. In fact, in the article that uh, you haven't mentioned that I did have a slight uh, go, I didn't... Uh, in fact, have a go at the DJs in that article. That was added on. I think you've probably been misquoted in the past. Oh, many a time. And I do, regret, <laughs> I do regret that article because I wasn't having a go at the other DJs and I said some very nice things about John, which never got in either. Uh, I did criticise Radio 1, uh, but I think it's a good thing to do that because from that, they're very good at taking... Except, yes, of course, but except uh, you're going to be criticised for, for doing that of because course, you're yes. no longer on Radio 1. Yeah. It, 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 what a mistake, Terry. <laughs> you were about to say. No, no, no. no, no. I, was, I was at one with, <laughs> with whoever found you. Who was that? Yes, you were. I can't remember. <laughs> so I, 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 I can't remember. It was Robin Marcus. Scott, because you used to go on the White Tornado. That's right, yeah. Now, look, I know this, this evening is going to get even more exciting now. <laughs> really? Yeah. How it's could such it be possible? possible? How, How could it be possible? 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 No, please, please. No, come on. No, You've got something I'll, up your sleeve, have you? Look, look yeah. hang on. Goes to autocue. Right. We've been talking about what Radio 1 was like 20 years ago. So we're going over live now by the miracle of satellite to London's West End, to Portland Place, that vineyard of the airwaves, where faceless men toil to harvest the grapes of wreath. Now, waiting there for us... <laughs> oh, don't think that didn't take time. Waiting for us there is Mike Shop. Smith to show us what they're up to tonight. Over to Portland Place.